One of you guys out there asked me to do a tutorial based on color in Adobe InDesign, so here you go. So first of all, there's two types of color that we need to consider in InDesign. We've got fill color, and that is anything that an object or text is filled with. And then we've got a stroke color, which is the outline of any object or text as well. So for example, we've got a fill color here of black, same for the text, and we've got a stroke or outline color of black for this one here. So let's start changing some colors and you should be able to see how easy this is. First of all, we're gonna be using the swatches panel, we're gonna be using the stroke panel. To get the swatches panel, go to window, color and swatches and to get the stroke panel, go to window and then stroke and then you've got both of those panels available to you as well. So in our swatches panel, here at the top, we have the fill, and we've got the stroke. Now, whatever's at the front is what is going to change color. So if we click on the outline stroke there and bring it to the front, when we select an object, it'll then be changing that outline or that fill color. I'll give you an example. So here we've got the big black square. We're gonna go over to our fill color and we're gonna change it from black to red. So it's changed to red. Now, because we've got the fill toggled at the front, it is changing it. If we went to the outline stroke there and we start to change it, for example, to black, it adds a black outline or a stroke, as you can see there. Now, for text, slightly different. What you'd either need to do is if you highlight the text and then select another color it's going to kind of show the opposite color sometimes that's not very helpful so when we click out we can now see that it's changed to red let's just undo that the other way to do it is click in your text box now if you were to click on the fill color as red it's going to fill the text box rather than the text bit confusing so let's just undo that there's a little toggle here which says formatting affects text and there's one here that says formatting affects container. So what we want to do is we want to click on this T. Once the T is selected, we can then click on the color and it'll change the color of the text itself. It's basically just wanting to change the color of anything inside that container if it's not toggled. So if you press white or green or blue, it's going to do that. So I'm just going to put it back to none so it's got no fill whatsoever inside the container. Right, so the second um, one we're gonna look at is stroke. So this box here has a 10 point, oh, sorry, five point stroke. So to change the, the sort of, how thick the outline is, you can do it in a couple of places. Up on the top title bar here, there's a little drop down menu and you can change the stroke there. Or also in the little stroke panel, change the stroke there you can change it to absolutely massive or custom size or one of these sort of preset sizes i'm just going to go to 10. you can also change the sort of corners so if you want it to be like a little rounded corner um if you can see close enough there's a little rounded corner on that now you can also change the type of stroke it is so if you wanted some diamonds or a, a dashed line you could do that as well um but to change the color of a stroke, we'll be toggling over to the stroke rather than the fill. And then we can change the sort of outline color as well. For text, similar thing. If you have the box selected and if you go to select a color, it's going to affect the box itself. Let's just undo. If you toggle the T, now it's going to affect what's inside the text box and the text. So right there I had the fill color selected rather than the outline so I need to go up and change it and toggle it to the outline so then we can now change that there as well so it's easy to get wrong but it's just a matter of making sure we've got either outline or fill selected so that's the first section of this tutorial which is the two different types of color usage we've got fill color which is anything an object or text is filled with or stroke color which is the outline of any sort of text or kind of object or frame. 
Next part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add your own swatches. So when you come into InDesign, you've probably got this basic set of swatches, which are great if you're just getting going, but if you really want to sort of add some of your own design flair, creating your own swatches is probably more advisable. To add your first swatch, it's really easy. So in the swatches panel, there's two ways to do this. Down at the bottom here, you've got this new swatch icon that you can press, or you can go to the burger menu and go to new color swatch. So let's open up this. We've got CMYK here in the drop down, and you've got RGB. Depending if you're working for screen or if you're working for print, use RGB or CMYK. I'm just going to make a nice orange color. Um, just going to slide up yellow and slide up magenta until I get a nice, sort of bright, vibrant orange. Take the cyan down to zero, black down to zero, um, somewhere around about 60 and 100. I'm going to add that to my swatches. Again, you can continue through and add some sort of subtle sort of purple colors, blue colors. I'm just going to add one or two like different colors um, until I'm kind of happy with that. Okay, so I've now got some additional colors added. So here on the screen, it's basically the, the basic color palette that you get. So I'm going to change a few colors around. So we've got this one here. I'm going to change the color to my new orange color. I'm going to hit orange, and then we've got our full fill color there. Again, I'm going to add this sort of um, pinky purple and sort of more of a purple. So I've got my three sort of colors here um, that we've created as a swatch. Here's the uh, purple which comes with the sort of basic swatches. And if you wanted to do some tint swatches, I can show you an example of why a tint swatch would work. I'm just going to put a background all the way across. And I'm just going to add the purple sort of purpley blue in the background and then I'm going to go to tint and I'm just going to put that down to say 10% now I think this uh, tint on the bottom was going to disappear and it adds this sort of grayed out version of it and you can add like different versions of how light that color is by sliding it up and down and that's creating like a tint swatch so if you don't necessarily want the entire vibrancy of that swatch and you say maybe I want a 17% tint or a 15% tint, you can slide that tint slider up and down. Just get rid of that background now. So to add your own tint swatches, there's a couple of ways to do it. What you can do is you can, say so if you've got that purple selected, I'm just gonna alt and drag, and I could literally just go to select it, and then I can take that down to say like 10%, and with this box selected, I can go to the burger menu and go new tint swatch, and it'll automatically put that 10% into this field at the bottom. You click add, and it'll add a tint swatch to your swatches panel. Now, if you haven't got it selected and you just want to create a tint swatch, just select the swatch that you want to do a tint swatch off. So let's say we're gonna do one for the orange. I'm going to select the orange, then we're going to go to the burger menu and go new tint swatch. Now what it has here is it's got it at 100%. So let's just slide that down to say 50% or 40%. 40%. There we go. Press add. And now that's added that to that as well. So let's just see what it looks like. Alt and drag and select. Select that. And now I've got a nice light version of that swatch. So that's how to add swatches and how to create tint swatches as well. If you're looking to use hex colors and RGB colors within your color swatches, here's how to do that. You go into the drop down menu and go to new color swatches and go to RGB. And here at the bottom, you've also got this um, hex code here. So I know FFD 100 is the yellow I use in my logo. I've typed that in and to add that hex code, click add and that will add that hex code color to your swatches. To apply that color, you could just select any sort of shape or frame and then just add that to whatever you would like. Again, if you want to use a tint swatch for that one color, alt and drag, and then you can go to add tint swatch and you can put that down to say 10% and 
and it'll make 10% swatches that. So the last way to add a color swatch to your swatches panel is to use the eyedropper. This is what I showed in my previous tutorial, and this is the color theme tool. If you've got an image which you quite like the color theme of, you can click on that tool and then click on the image and up will pop a color swatch. Click on that plus sign and that will add the color theme to your color palette. So that's my tutorial on how to use color within InDesign. I hope you got something out of that tutorial. If you did, hit like, consider subscribing, and I look forward to seeing you in another one of my videos out on screen now. Thanks for watching.